Hello to everyone. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. We are very happy to have you here with us today for this webinar, Study in French at Université de Montréal. Today we will talk about the advantages and opportunities of studying in French at UDM, which is a French-speaking university. For this, I will be accompanied by two guests, Olivier and Anna. I will let them introduce themselves. Hi, Olivier. Hi, Ines. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm uh, Olivier Desmarais, um, Information and Files uh, Officer. Uh, so uh, it's a pleasure to be there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Hannah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. My name is Hannah MacDonald, and I am a student in anthropology at University of Montreal. Thank you so much both for being here today. So for a reminder, this session is being recorded. It will be available for replay on our website, admission.umontreal.ca. Your microphone and camera will be turned off at all times, but please feel free to ask any question using the Q&A icon. We will be very happy to respond to them at the end of the webinar. Uh, lastly, a member of our team publishes link on the chat, so don't hesitate to have a look at the chat. So, Olivier, first of all, could you tell us a little bit about Université de Montréal? Yeah, for sure. We can start with the, the rank. So first, the Université de Montréal is the 88th uh, university in the whole world, according to Times Higher Education. Uh, it is a francophone university. Um, talking about that, it's the first uh, uh, francophone university in Canada and also in the top five uh, in all the world. Um, Université de Montréal is uh, situated in the, the province of Quebec, which is a French-speaking uh, province too. And... Um, all of our undergraduate programs are offered in French, some graduate programs are in French, and others are in English. Okay, and what do we study at Université de Montréal? Could you tell us a little bit about different fields and programs that we offer here? It's an excellent question. We have over 600 programs at Université de Montréal, so a lot of choices uh, that uh, goes from uh, health sciences with our faculty of medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, veterinary medicine, uh, optometry, nursing. Uh, we also have uh, architecture and urbanism of our faculty of planning. Uh, we have our programs of music from the faculty of music. Uh, and uh, finally, but not least, we also have the faculty of art and sciences that offers a lot of programs like communication, languages programs, uh, psychology, uh, a lot of social sciences too, to name uh, only them. So Olivier, one can feel lost uh, when faced with uh, this large choice of study programs. How do we navigate through all these choice of programs? Well, luckily, there are a lot of tools to uh, explore all of them. First of all, there is our website, uh, admission.umontreal.ca, and that uh, where we can find a descriptive page for every program where we will find the requirements, uh, the classes offered in that program, a description and everything. So it's really helpful to go uh, discover all the programs. Also, for the exploration, we do have online uh, help tools. Uh, first of all, we have the Affinity. Uh, which um, uh, provides, uh, provides us the opportunity to enter our uh, educational background and also uh, answer questions to show our interest in different fields. And uh, the tool will give us back programs that fit uh, our uh, interests and also our academic trajectory. So uh, it's a really uh, powerful uh, tool. Uh, it is uh, the public of that tool are people uh, that never went to university. Uh, so that's the, the only element to take into consideration. But if you have been to university, there's another tool uh, that is named Cursus, which is approximately the same uh, concept. Uh, it gives you the possibility to enter your interests and it will uh, give you uh, programs that are according uh, to them. So uh, it can be uh, super interesting to, to use those two tools to explore the programs and see what fits you uh, the most. Uh, we also have uh, the program comparator that gives you the possibility to put two programs one next to the other and see their resemblances and also the differences in between them. Okay, so we have a lot of online support tools, so feel free to try them out, and um, it's uh, on our website. So Olivier, we're going to talk now about the admission requirements. Uh, what are the requirements to enter programs of study? 
Well, generally for undergraduate uh, programs, we need uh, essentially three things in general. Uh, so first of all is the level of studies. Uh, so the pre-university studies typically. Uh, in Quebec, we have 13 years uh, of pre-university studies before to enter university. Uh, so we need a level uh, equivalent to that. Uh, also, there are some programs that uh, ask uh, prerequisite classes uh, where um, we uh, learn uh, concepts that will be uh, exploded uh, when we are in the program. Uh, also, there is a level of uh, French that needs to be uh, proven uh, to uh, enter the, the program. All the information are, uh, are on the descriptive page of every program. Uh, and also, the deadline for the French uh, level requirement is on the website of the Office of French language. Well, yeah, everything is on our website. <laughs> Olivier, what can we do if we don't have the right level of study, like students with a high school diploma in the rest of Canada or in the United States? That's a pretty good question. So first of all, uh, if you have one succeeded year at university, uh, it will bring you to uh, approximately the same level. Otherwise, we do have a program that is made uh, for that. Uh, it's named the um, preparatory year, which is a one year program that gives you the possibility to go uh, see the notions that are seen in our pre-university uh, 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 trajectory here in Quebec so that you start at the same level as every uh, student in your class. For some programs that you can find in the link we will share with you, uh, it's the concept of a four-year bachelor's degree. Uh, it's a super interesting opportunity. Uh, it's a uh, uh, the equivalent of a regular program, but with the uh, pre preparatory year that is included in the courses. So that can be super interesting to avoid uh, an additional immigration process and uh, also uh, uh, another admission process. So that can be super interesting if it's available uh, for uh, the program you're interested in. Okay, and also in addition, the first year will allow you to improve your French and also explore the subjects that interest you before diving in a specific program. Mm -hmm. Hannah, you've done a preparatory year. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience there? Yeah, so I did a preparatory year last year. I took the science pathway. So I did courses in biology, in my general and organic chemistry, physics, and calculus. I also took a mandatory course, which was uh, preparation for university work, um, which I found was a super helpful course. Uh, it taught you how to write a dissertation and to navigate the uh, library website for the University of Montreal to figure out to, how to find articles and do proper research. We learned how to take proper notes and do our readings and things like that. So I found that that course in my very first semester was super helpful. Uh, for the remainder of my university studies. Um, I also found it was helpful that I took four courses each semester rather than five, like I'm doing this year. It was a good in introduction into the workload that I have in university because it is um, very different from what we had in high school, definitely a step up. So that was a good stepping stone uh, before starting my bachelor's degree. Okay, thank you. And how did you know, because now you're studying in the Bachelor of Anthropology, how did you know you wanted to do this Bachelor, so the Baccalauréat en Anthropologie? Was it your idea before you started the preparatory year? Yeah, so actually I started my preparatory year thinking that I would go into a microbiology and immunology degree. And so that's why I took the science pathway to get all my required courses to be admitted into that program. Um, but the great thing about the preparatory year is that you don't have to apply for your bachelor's program until about December or January of your preparatory year. So you have time to continue to research programs and figure out what really interests you. And so I took that time to research the university's website, find out about all the different programs because I wanted to see what else was out there. And before doing this, I didn't quite know what anthropology was. And when I found it on the website, and I looked through the courses and did some more research, I found that it was super interesting. Um, and so I decided to apply for that. And yeah, what really attracted me about the anthropology degree was the broadness of the courses that are offered. With the four subcategories in anthropology, I could continue within biology, but with more of a human evolution standpoint. And I could also on the side take courses in linguistics and social anthropology and archaeology. 
Yeah, so for sure, we're going to discover a lot of new fields of study when you enter university. So this first year is really important to get to know all those subjects. So let's talk about the advantages of studying in French speaking uh, institution. Hannah, how did you want, how did you know you wanted to study in French and what do you benefit from studying in French? Yeah, so I came from Ontario. I grew up in Ontario. I took French immersion, which was the program there. And then I chose to go to a Francophone high school to improve my French. And then I chose again to go to a Francophone university because I wanted to continue improving my French. I was comfortable academically, but I wanted to continue in the social aspect. And I wanted to immerse myself completely in a community uh, that would be completely Francophone so that I could have friendships in French and just be completely surrounded by the language in order to continue improving. Um, so that's that was my main uh, reason why I decided to study in French. Uh, the benefits are huge. I've definitely um, grown a lot more confident in my French speaking over the past uh, year and a half that I've been at University of Montreal, um, especially with the past semester being in person and really speaking to professors and speaking to other uh, students. Um, I've definitely grown a lot more confident in my French and also job opportunities is a huge thing. They tell you this all the time in elementary and high school, but it really is true that if you move anywhere in Canada, knowing uh, having a very good level of French is definitely a huge benefit. And that benefited me in my volunteer program. I work at a hospital in the ICU and I encounter lots of visitors who speak both French and English. So it was a big thing in the application process that I was able to equally communicate in both French and English. So definitely studying at a French university and increasing your confidence in French prior to getting into a professional setting, uh, I think that's definitely a huge advantage. Yeah, you. and in, in Montreal, it's really important to know French also because it's a Francophone city. So it will help you to get a job and a lot of things. And Olivier is going to talk a little bit about that, uh, the advantage of studying in French uh, at UDM. Yeah, totally. Well, Anna covered a lot of them. Thank you so much. So yeah, Montreal is uh, essentially a Francophone city, like uh, the province of Quebec, which is essentially Francophone, but uh, there are Francophone communities everywhere in Canada. So I think it's a good way to uh, explore the culture, uh, the total culture of the of the country, knowing both English and French. So it's definitely uh, an upside career opportunities for sure. There are a lot of uh, um, position uh, that we can only occupy if we uh, do speak both the languages. So um, that's definitely uh, an upside too. And if we think more globally around the world, there are more than 300 million speakers of uh, French around the world. Uh, so a lot of uh, countries in Europe, in Africa too. Uh, so there are all places where uh, it can be a benefit. Yeah, and I'm going to add that uh, you can become completely bilingual and French is a Latin language, so it will help you to learn over uh, Latin language at University de Montréal, uh, University de Montréal, like uh, Spanish, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously there is fr some French requirements at Université de Montréal. Olivier, could you take a, a look about that? Uh, for sure, for sure. So um, uh, generally, we need a B2 level, which is an upper intermediate uh, level uh, of French uh, that is re required for our programs. Some of them ask a little more. It's indicated on the descriptive page uh, of the program. And there are a lot of uh, opportunities to uh, go learn uh, the language if necessary. Uh, so uh, we offer, uh, for example, uh, a program, online learning program for non francophone students. Um, it is a four month uh, program and it gives the possibility to go from a B2 level uh, to, uh, no, sorry, from a B1 level to a B2, uh, which is the level that is generally required. So it can be super interesting to look uh, into that. You will find the link uh, in the conversation. And um, also, if you want to move from other levels, if you're lower or higher than the B1, uh, then there is also the certificate uh, in French as a second language that is offered for a student. Uh, by the École de Langue, the School of Languages of University of Montréal. 
I, just, yeah, I don't know if I forgot to mention that yeah, the minimum uh, requirement in French uh, to enter University de Montréal is a B2 level, which means upper intermediate level. So this requirement can be higher in some programs. So be sure to check that out before applying for admission. Uh, and those programs are available for people who do not quite reach the required level. So we have a lot of uh, French programs to help you. Uh, Olivier, if you have been accepted into a study uh, pro program, but you are still hesitant to enroll because you have some difficulty in French or are really not sure of yourself, it is really important to know that we offer some support uh, to our students whose first language is not French. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about those programs? Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, the level that is uh, required to enter a program is the level needed uh, to uh, be able to succeed in that program. So uh, first of all, if you have, uh, for example, the B2, if the program asks uh, a B2, uh, you can uh, consider that you're prepared. Uh, if you're close to the, the border of the B2, though, uh, we can provide you with uh, extra classes to uh, go uh, refine your, uh, your knowledge uh, and work on things that uh, maybe uh, need to be uh, improved. Uh, otherwise, for anyone, if you need uh, support in learning French or uh, also individual tutoring, it's offered by the um, Office of French uh, of Université de yeah, so we have plenty of resources, so don't be afraid to uh, go and study in French. And Hannah, I wanted to ask you, how did you adapt to Université de Montréal, knowing that your, the French is not your first language? How do you make friends in this context? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, it is certainly, it can be a bit nerve wracking going into a school being surrounded by people whose native language is not the same as your own. Um, but I think definitely the force yourself into events and situations where you will have to speak French because as it may be a bit nerve wracking at first, you get used to it pretty quickly and then you improve over time. One of the things that I did at the very beginning in September this year, I went to my program's integration event, which was an entire afternoon of games and we did a scavenger hunt and all sorts of fun things. And it really gave me the chance to speak to people in my program and just talk to them in French and socialize in French and get a bit more used to that. Um, also, uh, joining a student organization, there's lots. I believe there's a website. I went on the website to find that. There's a whole list of them. So I'm, there's lots of different interesting things. So I joined uh, Ami de MSF, which is Friends of Doctors Without Borders. I'm an event coordinator with them. And so through that program, I've been able to meet students who are in other programs apart from my own and I've collaborated with them on projects I've held conferences and I'm holding more conferences in the rest of the year um, but yeah so that's given me a huge opportunity to continue to build my confidence in French and make more friends in this context yeah yeah, involvement in student life uh, we really allow you to discuss with your peers to meet new people speak french and also enrich your uh, study and um, your university file so don't be shy about getting involved in the student life uh, so anna do you have any advice on integration to give to non francophone students who, who are going to uh, study to udm next year yeah, I think the biggest thing would be definitely not to be shy to ask for help or use your resources. Um, take a French class if you are required to or if you feel you need to up your French level. Um, talk to your professors and go to office hours and because most all of my professors have been very open to office hours and explaining concepts and they've been very good about that. Um, and definitely don't uh, don't be shy about making mistakes in front of native speakers because there's also uh, the other side I found with my friends is they'll ask me things about English and words in English and I'll ask them words in French. And so there is always a recognition of the language barrier and it's definitely nothing to be shy about. Um, but yeah, take every opportunity to speak French and join student organizations and meet people and improve your confidence because with that confidence in French, there's truly so many opportunities. Thank you for those great advice. So to ease the transition and to help you integrate into the university environment, we really advise you to have a look at all the events available for the new students and also the activities that offered um, that we offer during the year. Uh, Olivier, do you have some example of those activities? 
Yeah, we're well, on top of the mountain named by Anna. Uh, there are a lot of activities offered by the services uh, for students. Um, extracurricular classes uh, of languages, arts, uh, there are really um, uh, plenty of them and gives you the possibility to meet with people with whom you have the same interest. So in the same way, it's interesting to, to make connection. There is also a, a program that um, pair you with a, a student that uh, was already uh, in Université de Montréal to help you discover and integrate. That can be a, a, an option too and to do the reverse too once uh, you, you are in university. Uh, invest in Montreal for a while, then uh, apply for that program, but uh, to um, uh, meet with someone that is new at the university. Those are cool opportunities to uh, meet uh, new people and uh, uh, embrace the, uh, the university experience. Yeah, and finally, we also have um, the on-campus housing, university residence. So this can be good, a good option to uh, meeting people also. So now we have the time to take some questions. So I see here, uh, is there an uh, ecology and environment program? Uh, sorry? <laughs> uh, is there an ecology and environment program? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, well, it is uh, in the uh, baccalaureate in uh, biology, the bachelor in biology, uh, it is an orientation inside of that program that gives you uh, the possibility to focus in the environment like that. So that would be uh, the program that comes to my mind. Okay, thank you. And so I see another question, uh, what French test should I take to prove my level of French? It's a good question. There are uh, a couple of tests that are uh, accepted, uh, the TFI, TCF, TEF, uh, DELF, and DALF. Uh, so um, it's possible to pass, uh, pass the test and uh, send us the, the result uh, when it's done. We also offer a test uh, at our um, uh, Center of Languages, so it can be uh, an option uh, too. And um, for the French uh, requirement of the program I want to apply to? That's a pretty good question. So there are two notions that we need to know. First, the level we need, and second, the deadline we have to prove that we have that level. Uh, the level we need is indicated on the descriptive page of um, the program in the section uh, admission et exigence, admission and requirements. Uh, there is a portion that talks about the French requirement. So here we can see, is it a B2 level, C1, C2? Uh, so this is where we see the information. On the other end, there is the deadline we have have to prove uh, the, our level of French, that we can find it on the website of the uh, Office of the French of uh, Université de Montréal. So with those two informations, you have everything you need uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, satisfy that uh, requirement. Yeah, exactly. Everything is on the website, as we say. <laughs> so also, I see a question about immigration. Uh, what are the documents required for immigration? Um, essentially, generally, we have uh, two, uh, uh, two documents we need. So first of all, we apply to the uh, provincial level to have uh, the Certificate d'Acceptation du Québec, the Quebec Acceptation Certificate, uh, to uh, enter first, uh, well, to get the, the approval from the Quebec. Once we have that, we can now go to the federal level, to the Canada, and uh, ask for the study permit. So uh, those are the two uh, required documents. Um, and depending on the country where you come from, a visa might need a uh, necessary to. Awesome. So we're going to take the last one uh, question. So it's about the application for uh, the fall 2022. Mm -hmm. So can I still make an application for uh, next fall? Yes, you are in time to start in September. You need to act fast, though, uh, because the deadline is the 1st of January. So it's coming. You have 10 days. Don't stress. You have time. But uh, yeah, it's the moment to uh, come into action so that you can enter uh, in September. Thank you. So that was the last uh, question. Uh, that's all the time we have uh, for today. So I remind you that this conference will be replayed on our website. So do not hesitate to go and see it again. So it's admission.humorial.ca. Thank you so much for participating to this webinar. We hope that we have answered some of your questions. Thanks to our two guests, Olivier and Anna, and also thanks to all the technical team. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Have a good night.